ho 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 merry christmas today's video is a compilation video of wargaming's three best videos ever i cut it up to the most important parts so that you can watch it all in one place and also save it to your playlist because there's a lot of information on spotting and concealment mechanics uh, that's going to be useful for either beginners or even seasoned pros i will also add timestamps for you so you can easily find the information uh, that you need or come back to it at a later date uh, to refresh your knowledge so without further ado let's get straight to the spotting mechanics every tank in the game has seven visibility checkpoints and two view range ports the latter are needed to spot enemy vehicles these ports emit virtual vision rays if these rays cross the visibility checkpoints on the enemy vehicles then an enemy is spotted to understand the location of these points better imagine your favorite vehicle And now, we'll cover it with a box. Turret location, gun length, machine guns, and antennas don't affect the box size. Only the overall size of the vehicle's physics model is taken into account. So, there's a checkpoint right at the center of the box roof. Two more checkpoints are located at the front and at the back of the vehicle. Another two are at the sides. So, that's five. The six point is on the gun mantlet and it's aligned with the seventh. As soon as the turret position changes, one of these points moves together with the mantlet and the other stays in place. The upper checkpoint and the point on the gun mantlet also function as view range ports. Hey, hey, hey! Easy! Theory's good, but how do you use it in the battle? Let's see some specific examples. You're standing behind cover. Allies are behind you. The enemy is ahead. Some are asking you to light them up. Others are waiting for free damage. In a situation like this, don't try to spot the enemy this way. You're exposing your checkpoint, but your viewports are still behind cover. You've got yourself spotted, but haven't spotted the enemy. And you've also taken a lot of damage. This is how you should do it. Turn your turret and carefully try to spot the enemy with your viewport on the gun mantlet. Your allies fire off. You save your HP and receive a bonus for spotting. Everybody's happy. And another example. You don't need to rush in and spot the enemy first. It's pretty risky. Sure, you'll see them, but you won't last long. To be a good scout and keep yourself safe, you can stay on your side of the hill. You just need to roll up the hill and point your turret in the right direction. The view range port in the gun base will give you all the information. And you almost don't risk anything. Let's move forward. Two scouts are hiding in the bushes. The first is spotting and the other... The other is being spotted. But not for long. That's because it didn't hide its checkpoint. The first tank exposes its gun, machine gun, antenna, and even the corners of the hull itself. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that all checkpoints are covered. It provides good spotting and is still intact. See? That's what knowing the game mechanics can do. By the way, about the mechanics. Vision rays are not endless. The maximum view or spotting range is 445 meters and the maximum draw distance is 565 meters. You need to understand the difference between these terms. View range is the maximum distance at which you can spot the enemy and the draw distance is the maximum distance at which you can see the vehicles in general. Both allied vehicles and enemy vehicles spotted by your team. Depending on the distance between vehicles, the vision rays have different frequencies. The highest frequency is at a distance of 120 meters. The greater the distance between vehicles is, 
the lower the frequency of rays will be. And now, let's get some practice in. There are three circles on your minimap. The big circle shows the draw area. The middle circle shows the maximum view range area. And the small circle shows the current view range of your vehicle. These are not just circles. These are important game tools. And you need to use them. Every time you shoot at the enemy within the maximum view range circle, you risk being spotted with all enraging consequences. To shoot with impunity, roll back out of the maximum view range circle. The enemy won't be able to spot you even theoretically, but you can do some damage and save your HP. But that's not all. If the enemy vehicle is so far away that you can only see it on the minimap, it doesn't mean you're out of play. You can guesstimate the direction of fire on the minimap. To do so, use the pointer. When the sector's defined, you look through your sight at the most probable enemy location. Fire! And bingo! Isn't that beautiful? Of course, you won't land a hit with every shot. But I love tanks for the moments like this one. Also, remember one simple thing. No tank in the game has a maxed out view range to begin with. To be a really cool scout, you need to upgrade your ride. This is down to you alone. You choose for yourself what to equip your vehicle with and how to train your crew. Don't screw it up. Documentation shows the initial vehicle characteristics, assuming that it's manned with a 100% trained crew without any additional skills and perks, and there's no equipment or consumables on the vehicle. To improve your view range fully, you first need to equip your vehicle with coated optics or binocular telescope. In some cases, you can mount both, but keep in mind, bonuses from these pieces of equipment are not totaled. When stationary, you get an additional 25% to your view range, in motion, 10%. Secondly, you need to train your crew, especially your commander. Every additional 1% of the commander's major qualification improves the vehicle view range by 0.43%. To enhance the main qualification, you need to equip your vehicle with ventilation, the national food or drink consumable, and train your crew with the Brothers in Arms perk. Also, it would be good to train the commander with the recon skill and the radio operator with the situational awareness skill. And don't forget about Sixth Sense. This is one of your main allies in the battle. If the enemy spots your vehicle, you'll receive the alert about it in three seconds. Ignoring it will make your trip to the garage arrive sooner. This is all well and good, but sometimes three seconds is too long. And you also have your brain, not just the light bulb. So use it. If you feel you might have been spotted, don't wait for the light bulb. Roll back to a safe place beforehand. Your crew won't exactly say thank you, but their gratitude will certainly show itself later on. Remember that if your commander is injured, their sixth sense won't work, and your vision range drops by half. In this case, any enemy will outscout you. So don't even try to spot them. The result is pretty obvious. When the tank's equipped with all the necessary equipment and consumables, when the crew is trained, the numbers say that the vehicle view range can exceed 500 meters. But the maximum view range in the game is 445. So why do you need all those skills, equipment, and consumables? It seems that you can just raise it to the maximum and stop. But things aren't that simple. Let's do a small experiment. Let's take two scouts. Identical at first glance, but the view range on the first one is 445 meters, and the second scout has a view range of 507. There are several enemy vehicles behind the hill. The first scout rolls out and shows us four tanks. Well, not bad. Now let's see how many vehicles the second scout will spot. Wow, it's amazing. It lit them up like a Christmas tree. Ten. Ten vehicles. And it's not a bug or an accident. 
That's the tank's improved view range. Every extra meter of the view range is very useful. It sees straight through the enemy's camouflage. To reinforce its importance, let's do another experiment. Let's take the same scouts and put them on the airfield map. The crew isn't trained with camouflage, and there's no camo on the tank either. So neither have any advantage in concealment. Everything depends purely on their view range. Now, let's the tanks move towards each other, and we'll see what distance they get each other in their sights. The IU-251, with a view range of 507 meters, spots the enemy at 427 meters. And its opponent hasn't seen anyone yet. And only now, after the precious seconds are gone, it's finally spotted. The rangefinder shows 375 meters. But why is that? Shouldn't it be 445? That's because every vehicle in the game also has concealment parameters, not just a view range. The vehicle's concealment is affected by the vehicle type, size, and presence of special equipment and consumables. Vehicle concealment gets worse when firing and on the move. Vehicle's concealment is affected by its type, dimensions, special equipment and consumables, directives, and, of course, its crew. For any vehicle, four concealment figures are distinguished. First, a static vehicle. Second, a static vehicle that fires its gun. Third, a moving vehicle. And fourth, a moving vehicle that fires its gun. You can check the characteristics right in the garage. But what do they mean? It's all quite simple, really. These figures are used to calculate the distance at which the vehicle will be spotted by the enemy. Where 50 is the constant value that shows the distance of the so-called X-ray vision. Wow, easy. Let's look at a specific example. Say the enemy view range is 450 meters. In random battles, that's an average value for tier 10 vehicles. And here's a part chat, right from the factory, without any concealment improvements. The static tank will be spotted by the enemy at 383 meters. If we move, they'll see us at 400 meters. Should we fire our gun, the enemy will detect us at 437 meters. And if we shoot while moving, this distance will increase even further. An important note, light tanks generally have an above average view range, while, say, Soviet heavy tanks are fairly blind. Don't try to remember all the numbers, but knowing at least estimates can be useful. In any battle, you have two simple helpers, circles on the minimap and the rangefinder. Using them is no simple task, but you can do it. Case one, start of the battle. You are driving to a flank. An allied light tank detects an enemy spotter. You've got to shoot, yet the distance is dangerously short. As soon as you shoot, you get spotted. A sad but expected demise. Case two, a similar battle, a similar path. But now a blind heavy tank gets spotted instead of a light tank. Take your time to aim and score a frag. Even in this case, everything could have been different. Let's examine it from a different angle. If the enemy has a fast tank, it can get somewhere between you and your target. You frag the heavy. The heavy doesn't spot you, but the invisible opponent does. That's why instead of shooting, it's sometimes best to simply stop and wait for the enemy to drive to a distance that's safe for you. In general, use your head before a battle starts. Analyze the team roster. Think, where will the most dangerous enemies go? As the battle progresses, check who hasn't been spotted yet. Figure out where they might be, and don't be shy about checking the popular bushes. Allies are under long-range fire, but there's no enemy nearby? A light tank must be close. Get to a safe spot and check the bushes. 
The destroyed enemy is sure to appreciate it. See your sixth sense triggering? Now you really must check that bush. You don't lose anything if you miss, but if you hit your prey, the sense of your own greatness will overwhelm you. Let's get back to the theory. You don't have to be a genius to remember the tank is concealed most if it doesn't move and doesn't shoot. Turret traverse does not affect concealment. But as soon as the vehicle hull moves, the concealment factor drops significantly. For heavy tanks and SPGs, it drops by 50%, for tank destroyers by 40%, and for medium tanks it's 25%. At the same time, light tanks have a bonus. Their concealment remains the same whether they are moving or not. But what rule comes without exceptions? Certain light tanks still lose a quarter of their concealment when moving, while some tank destroyers don't. Top-tier Swedish tank destroyers can turn and incline the hull in siege mode without any loss of concealment. At the same time, in travel mode, their concealment drops as much as for any other tank destroyer. The largest exception, literally, is the Japanese behemoth, Oni. It is equally visible, regardless of whether it's moving or standing still. Hiding this beast in bushes is as hopeless as hiding a train in a parking lot. Now let's see how these rules work in practice. Many players believe that if they drive slowly, their chance of getting spotted is lower. In reality, it doesn't matter whether you're going full throttle or prowling in first gear. You are equally visible for the enemy because your vehicle is moving. The only difference is the lead they need to take when aiming at you. If you're not driving anywhere, but the vehicle is sliding off a hill, its concealment also drops. Even if you're not driving or sliding anywhere, but simply got in the way of an ally, who in their innocence pushes your vehicle, concealment also drops. And with it, your chance of survival. But let's get back to the theory. Back to the theory, yes. We didn't tell you about vehicle concealment when you fire your gun. By the way, concealment drops dramatically. For light tanks, it's about four to five times, while for artillery and tank destroyers, it can drop by as much as 10 times. The larger the vehicle's dimensions and gun caliber, the more concealment drops. A muzzle brake on the barrel increases the concealment drop effect. Important thing here, it's your vehicle's concealment that drops, not the spotting range of your vehicle. But an example is better than just words. Let's take three SU-152 destroyers. Tank destroyers, of course. The crews, the equipment, and the consumables are the same. None have any concealment improvements. The only difference is in the guns. They are the Howitzer and two 122 mm guns mod, 1937 and 1944. The latter two have the same caliber, penetration and average damage. The difference is that the mod 1944 gun has a muzzle brake. Now let's take the observer tank and see what distance it spots the opponents at. The Pershing has a view range of 400 meters. It's close enough to spot the first tank destroyer at 392 meters. The second three meters closer and the last one even closer, but by a meter or so. While static, all the destroyers get spotted at 342 meters. Conclusion, gunfire has a very sharp negative effect on vehicle concealment, but the effect of a muzzle brake on it is minuscule. Another thing, wounded or stunned crew don't affect vehicle concealment. At the same time, if a vehicle is on fire, its concealment drops significantly. In other words, while the vehicle is burning, it's as easy to spot as a bonfire. All right, we know how to impair concealment. Now to the improvement part. There are a number of means to increase concealment. 
The best of them is to match the concealment skill for the whole crew. With it, the initial concealment factor will increase by approximately 1.8 times. The Brothers in Arms perk will add to concealment as well. An improved rations or improved ventilation will make your vehicle even more stealthy. Directives and improved equipment will pretty much max out your concealment. But you'll have to spend bonds to get them. At the same time, the easiest and cheapest method is to mount a camo net and apply a camouflage. The net becomes effective three seconds after the vehicle stops, while camouflage works at all times. And here's a little life hack. To increase the concealment factor, you only need to paint the hull. Applying a camo to the turret and gun is just for looks. Remember, the effect of camo net and camouflage is directly dependent on the vehicle type. If camouflage is useful in all cases, the net is a lot more complex, since it uses one of your equipment slots. Mounting it at the expense of a different piece of equipment is only reasonable for tank destroyers and some light tanks if you prefer to hide behind bushes and stand in one spot a lot. Otherwise, it's best to use the slot for something more useful. Now that we've pumped up the concealment of our tank destroyers to the max, let's get back to Minsk and conduct another experiment. This time, all the destroyers have the same guns. Shots are fired. And what do we see? Concealment, brothers in arms, extra rations, ventilation, camo net and camouflage only give an advantage of 23 meters compared to an absolutely stock tank destroyer. Improved equipment and directives add a little extra, but only a couple more meters. So why even bother improving all this concealment? We've already told you that concealment drops drastically when the gun is fired. But what happens if the gun remains silent? The destroyers are stationary. The tank gets closer and closer. And what do we see? The stock SU gets spotted at 342 meters, while the pumped up destroyers are only found when within 220 meters. Over 120 meters of difference along an unobstructed straight line. This results in the opportunity to shoot first, cause extra damage, have a higher survivability rate and get a higher rate of victories. Nothing to think about. Concealment must be improved. And remember, even if you maxed out the concealment skill, even if you hid in bushes and no one's seeing you, even if you are sure that in this spot, no one will ever spot you, you still want to make sure that a not so smart ally doesn't get between you and the enemy. As you know, spotting range depends on the enemy view range and your concealment value. The higher this value is, the shorter the spotting range will be. If a tank is hidden behind cover, the concealment value is considered at its max, and you can spot this vehicle only at 50 meters. Not only buildings, but any of these objects can serve as cover. They are all similarly non-transparent for the enemy's vision rays. But keep in mind that every tank in the game has two view range ports and seven visibility checkpoints. And all vehicles have different dimensions. Where you can hide one tank, you might not hide another. It's clear that opponents spot each other using the top view range port, which is also a visibility checkpoint. But things can be different. Let's take two similar tanks. One is parked in the open field and the other is behind cover. And what do we see? The vehicle behind a building is spotted, while the tank in the field is not. At first sight, it seems absurd, but if you look closer, this vehicle's vision rays hit the non-transparent object, 
and one of its visibility checkpoints is exposed to the enemy's line of sight. So park your tank carefully, especially when every second counts. When capturing a base like this, remember that a crate protects you from both vision rays and shells, but canvas won't hide from either. Also, all vehicles within a 50 meter range are spotted automatically. Don't confuse it with the radius on the minimap. In this case, the vehicles won't spot each other. Let's get back to concealment. You can improve your concealment with the help of bushes, trees and other flora. Objects like these give a bonus to the concealment value. Small bushes and plants without foliage usually add a smaller bonus. Thick plants with foliage double the bonus. But what do these numbers mean? The answer is simple. They are added to the vehicle concealment value in the formula of the spotting range. Hey, hey, easy there. Let's see a specific example. We take an observer tank and three vehicles with similar concealment. The first vehicle is placed on a clean straight line. The second is hidden behind a semi-transparent bush and the third one is covered by a thicker bush. Send our observer forward and let's watch. The first vehicle is already spotted at 383 meters. The second is spotted at 100 meters closer and the third becomes visible only at 183 meters. Let's check the test results with the help of a formula. Yeah, that fits. Let's bring our observer back to the starting position and send him forward again. The other tanks remain at their previous positions, but they're moving now. The red vehicle is spotted at almost 400 meters. The yellow one at 300 meters while the green tank is spotted at 200 meters. Let's insert the value of the vehicle concealment on the move to the formulas. And everything fits again. And what will happen if you shoot? It's clear in theory, the bushes provide great advantage. But what about in practice? Let's put our observer at the range from where he spotted the first vehicle and watch. The thing is that not only the concealment of the vehicle itself decreases. All flora in a 15 meter radius from a firing vehicle becomes transparent and doesn't provide any bonus to concealment. The drop of both values lasts only a split second, but the formulas of calculating the spotting range for all tanks become the same for this time. And now let's use our head and roll the vehicles 15 meters back from the bushes. It's very easy to do. Switch to sniper mode and roll until the bush becomes opaque. And that's it. You can fire. The first vehicle is spotted just like before. To see the second one, we'll have to move 100 meters closer. And the third tank will only be spotted from 237 meters. It all adds up. But there's one nuance. Let's do another test. Here are two twins. Both have identical view range and concealment. The one stays 15 meters away from the bush and the other takes the observer's place. Let's go. One vehicle is moving forward while the other is turning around, but spot each other at the same time. In other words, when more than 15 meters away from the bush, it's similarly opaque for both vehicles. You can use this. If an enemy moves so that there will be a bush between you, you might want to hold your fire. In the first case, you'll be spotted right after the shot. But if you just wait a little, there's a chance to remain undetected. And if you want to fire and remain unspotted for sure, do the following. Roll to the bush, spot the enemy, Roll 15 meters back and then fire. Then again, roll forward, spot, 
roll back, and only then fire. Seems inconvenient, at least it's safe. Now it's time to talk about what spotting time and visibility time are. The first is the time when you or your ally are spotting the enemy. As soon as the enemy stops being spotted, they remain visible for about 10 more seconds. So the visibility time is the spotting time plus these 10 seconds. Sometimes it's not enough. The designated target perk can help in this situation. It adds two more seconds to the visibility time of the enemy. The focus on target directive will add two more. In total, it's 14 seconds instead of the standard 10. But it's not that simple. First of all, this will affect only those enemy vehicles you spot yourself. Secondly, it will work only against opponents who are in the 10 degree sector of your gun direction at the last moment of spotting. Here's some advice. If you play using your allies spotting, it's almost pointless to improve visibility time. You'll still see the enemy for the same 10 seconds and not more. If you spotted the enemy vehicle, but it turns around the corner expecting to get off your radar, don't start looking for a new target right away. Against you, their standard calculations don't work as reliably as against others. These four additional seconds are good for vehicles with a long reload time. Every time you spot the enemy, you have time for one more shot. And it's not a shot to nowhere, but at a certain target. Let's get back to concealment. The one bush situation is clear. But what if there are several bushes? It's very simple. Concealment bonuses from each bush are added up. But remember that the maximum value of this sum is 80. For more clarity, the table shows a number of particular cases. Knowing your vehicle concealment and approximate enemy view range, you can roughly estimate the distance you will be spotted from. In other words, if your vehicle concealment is more than 20, the enemy will be able to spot you through double bushes at only a 50 meter range, regardless of their view. Here it is, a real shooting bush. If you find good thick bushes and want to check their precise number, you know what to do. Roll to the first bush, switch to sniper mode, roll back and count like this. Now you can fire. And fire. And fire. Repeat until the enemy comes from your rear. However, it's not the end. While the fir trees conceal tanks about as well as bushes, there's a thing about other trees. The thing is, every object like this has an invisible simplified model. It can be slightly different from the visual model, but it shields your vehicle from the enemy's vision. As you can see, the models of fir trees and bushes suit well for concealment. To hide your vehicle behind a tree, you'll have to bring it down. This is how it looks like in the visibility system. A tree that toppled near a bush or two trees fallen next to each other work like double bushes. You can hide behind palm trees using the same principle, but be careful. You can be immediately hit by a shell from a conservationist and vice versa. If you see a tree falling, shoot there to test that woodcutter. Sometimes it makes sense to fell a fir tree. The bonus to concealment won't increase but a fallen fir tree will give you cover from the enemy in a greater sector. But no matter how many fir trees you bring down and how well you master the hiding skill, here's a simple truth. 
you won't be able to sit in bushes all the time. If you want to win more, seize the moment when you need to advance and go for it. And that's all for today. Share your ideas about the topic of the next episode. And we might tell you exactly about that.